Hello everyone and welcome to the 34th Coco Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how you can work with custom sheets in Coco. So in the previous tutorial I showed you how you could work with alert sheets in Coco and it's a nice little way that you can you know tell uh, an alert or create an alert sheet and it's basically a fill-in-the-blank kind of process. You tell it the title and the message and a bunch of button properties and stuff and basically it'll generate for you a sheet and you can display that in your application but of course you know it's uh, nice if you're working with alerts and it's definitely uh, probably the be much it's much better option than creating a custom sheet for an alert but if you ever want to uh, customize your sheets basically the things that drop down like we have in the last tutorial then you want to be able to have a way of creating those sheets on your own and so um, you know, alert sheets are for alerts, but if you want to have some custom stuff, you're going to want to be able to make, you know, your own custom sheets. So, an example of a custom sheet might be if you are working in, like, QuickTime, and you go to hit the export option, then, you know, you get the sheet with a bunch of export options, and, you know, you can do whatever you want there. Another example might be if you're working in a game or something, and you have a preferences for that game, uh, you might have a modal sheet that drops down, and it might display a bunch of options for, you know, video settings or audio. And, uh, you know, that's uh, once, you know, you hit OK or apply to those settings, the sheet would go away and then you can resume your game. So that's the idea of um, working with sheets. And uh, you can create a custom sheet. Uh, and I'll show you how you can do that in this tutorial. So the first step here is we're going to make a new app controller. Uh, instance or object. So go ahead and create a new Objective C class, call it App Controller, and go ahead and save that to your project. And now we'll go ahead back to our main menu nib and we will make a new object out of that. So we'll create a new object and we'll make it the App Controller. And you know this process, I'm sure by now we've done it a hundred times in these tutorials. So the next step is to kind of set up our app controller instance for what we're going to be doing in this tutorial. So uh, the idea is that we're going to be displaying a sheet. We're going to have one button to activate the sheet. And then we're also going to have another IB action basically to close the sheet. And so that's two IB actions, one to open, one to close. And the other thing we're going to have is a property to the sheet itself. And what this will allow us to do is uh, well, I'll test a few things with it, but I'll mainly kind of close the sheet and uh, just a bunch of things that we'll do that you'll see in a little bit. But anyway, we'll have a property to the sheet, and uh, we'll go ahead and create this now. So we'll say assign and IB outlet and this window sheet. And I briefly mentioned this in the last tutorial, but an NS window is a sheet in Coco, so it's not an NS view or anything else. Uh, although it kind of looks like it, it is indeed an NS window. So um, I'm sure there's good reasoning behind this, but anyway, uh, that's what they use for sheets. So uh, that's why we're going to create a property and we're not making it weak because NS window doesn't work with weak properties. So we make it an assigned property. Or um, anyway, that's, that's what we're doing. All right, so the next step is to make our IB action. So we'll have an IB action called activate sheet. And once we got that there, we'll make another one for closing the sheet. And there we go. So we can go ahead and set up one of these IB actions in our main menu nib. So we'll right click on our app controller. And actually, I forgot to create the object already, so we'll add the button. And this is our activate sheet button because uh, we'll press this, of course, to open the sheet. And then we can make that connection between our app controller and that sheet. So we'll just take the activate sheet action and connect it to the activate sheet button. All right, so there we go. Now we have that. So the next step is to, of course, figure out, well, how are we going to get this sheet window to appear? And you might be thinking, well, you know, we can just add a window from our library here, throw it on our bench, and we're all set to go. Just make the connection, and everything is good. But the problem with this is that we might never really use this sheet. For example, you open QuickTime, you play a movie, you close, you close QuickTime, 
And what happened? Well, you never use the sheet. You never use the export panel, the save panel, the anything panel uh, that might show up when you're activating it. So of course, that's an issue. Uh, we don't want to be creating objects that we may never use. And so we really, in an ideal example here, we want to separate the sheet from the main menu nib. Because again, everything in this main menu nib is going to be created when the application starts up. And if we don't need something, generally you don't want to put it in there. So where do we want to put it? Well, we'll create a separate nib for it. And we can do this by hitting Command N or File, New File. Go to User Interface. And under Window, uh, this will create a new Window nib file for us. So we can go ahead and hit that, and we'll call it Sheet. And Create. So now we have this nice new sheet nib file, and it just has a window, and that's cool, it has a window. So we'll go ahead and add a button for this, and this is going to be our, again, our sheet button, or sorry, our sheet window that we're going to be using, and the button's just going to say close on it. There's a few things we have to change on this window, though, before we uh, keep going with this. Uh, there's a few attributes we have to change. Um, you can leave the title bar on or off, it doesn't actually matter. I like to just kind of turn it off though, because I think it makes it look a little more like a sheet. Um, although you might think it makes it look like a view, so you could leave it on. It doesn't really matter, um, but it's personal preference. Uh, the next is visible at launch. It's not going to be a visible at launch, so we can just uncheck that. Then the next thing that you want to leave on is release when closed. And this has to do with memory management. It's going to release the window uh, when it's closed. And so we're going to be programmatically closing the window in our code. And we want to be making this release the window when we close it. So anyway, that's uh, one of the behaviors we want to keep on for the window. All right, so now that we have that, uh, we can leave it. And yeah, so we'll just that's pretty much everything that we needed for working with this window. The next part is to figure out, well, OK, we have this app controller instance way over in our men main menu nib. How do we tell it to make a connection between that and this sheet nib here. And it seems like that's not going to happen, right? Well, um, you know, it's pretty tough uh, to really envision how this works. But basically, what we want to do is, as the app controller instance over here, we want to become the owner of this sheet nib. And how this works is we can say, well, files owner, you are going to be the app controller instance. And we just change our file files owner to become the app controller. And what we're going to do in code is actually tell uh, in our app controller class we're going to load up this nib and say that we are going to become the app controller or sorry the app controller is going to become the owner of this nib file and so that's uh, how we can kind of do that and the neat thing though about doing this is that we can make all the connections in interface builder so we don't actually have to do any special stuff we can make all the connections right here by just saying that our files owner is going to be an app controller so we can make the connection between the close sheet action and our sheet property that we had, we can connect to the window. And there we go. We've made all of our necessary connections. So now that we have that, we have to, of course, get back to the code. So um, the code for this is always fun. Uh, activate sheet is the first thing that's going to happen, of course, when we go to hit that activate sheet button. And I'm going to go ahead and just change this to IB action because it's kind of appropriate, I guess, for what it is. But anyway, that's the same thing as void if you didn't know. But anyway, I just change it to IB action just to make it look a little more like what it should. Okay, so now that we have our little method in here, what is the activate sheet method going to do? Well, it's going to first have to load the nib that we had. So it has to load that sheet window out of the nib. And so what we're going to be doing for this, and I actually forgot to do something for this tutorial, but uh, what we want to do, uh, of course, we had our property for our sheet window. And I forgot to synthesize that, so uh, go ahead and synthesize that. I want to say synthesize and sheet and gets underscore sheet. And that's actually going to be a, a new feature in an upcoming Xcode to automatically synthesize this stuff. But anyway, uh, aside from that, anyway, make sure you're synthesizing the property uh, for the sheet. All right, so going back to what I was trying to explain here, the activate sheet action is going to open up that nib or load the nib. And what we want to do is we want to say, well, if there is no sheet, 
So no underscore sheet. Then we want to create the sheet. Basically, we want to that uh, means basically we never loaded the nib, and so that's what we want to do. Uh, because if we loaded the nib, we want we would have made that connection that we said in interface builder, and obviously we didn't yet. So we have to uh, load up the nib, and to do this, we can use the NS bundle class. And NS bundle is uh, kind of a neat class that you can work with, uh, and it simply uh, has a bunch of methods that you can use to load some resources in your application, but we're not going to go into too much detail in this tutorial, uh, but anyway, you can check that class out on your own time if you want. But the method we're interested in using is load nib named owner. And the first part is pretty self-explanatory, it's going to load a nib named sheet. And that's uh, just our sheet nib right here. And the owner parameter is who's going to become the file's owner for the nib file. And uh, we're in our app controller class right now, so like I said before, we as the app controller want to become the owner. And this will allow us to make all those connections that we made in our interface builder here. And when this uh, nib is loaded, when we call this, all those connections will be made. So now our sheet property will now have its reference, and we'll also have, uh, of course, we want, we'll have the close action as well, that when we click the close button, that, that can be called. Okay, so now that we have that, the next step is to, of course, activate the sheet. So, you know, we loaded the all those connections and we uh, created our window, but we have to actually display it as a sheet now. So, to do this, we can say nsapp, which is an instance of NS application, and nsapp is specifically the application uh, that we are, so it's us, basically. nsapp, and we want to call the method begin, uh, begin sheet, and all this other awesome stuff here. So you can read through that, but I'm not going to read it to you because it's a lot of stuff. All right, so now that we have all this, uh, let's just kind of run through this method. So basically the first parameter is begin sheet, which just means you're going to begin some kind of sheet, and that's going to be self.sheet. That's just the sheet that we have our connection to. Pretty self-explanatory. The next part is modal for window, and this means what window are you going to be displaying this sheet in? And so this specifically is, uh, of course, this window right here. Now this is referenced by the app delegate, and the app delegate uh, has the reference to window called window. And so we can actually ask our app delegate for its window instance or the reference. So what we can do right here is say, well, we want to get our app delegate to tell us. Oops, I put one too many in there. We can tell it to uh, give us its window instance, and to do this, we can just say NS app get our delegate. So NS app delegate, and delegate now we want to get your window, and that's uh, basically the setup for that. And now we have a reference to that main window in our main menu nib file. The next part is modal delegate, which is who is going to handle the delegate uh, methods that are sent to it. And we just say self. It doesn't really matter for this because we're not going to get a uh, delegate calls, the only one you're really going to get is the did end selector. So basically when our, uh, if we were to implement something, basically when the sheet closes, it's going to let us know by sending us whatever selector we pass in here, but we aren't really interested in this because we have the close button on our sheet. And what the close button is going to do is close the window. We don't really care uh, what, you know, we don't really care about the did end selector. It's more important for when you're working with the alert sheets because you don't really have you don't have the same flexibility you can't just add a button in there and you know add an action so you rely on this did end selector but for our custom sheets we don't really care because in our example here we have the close button that's going to close the sheet for us so anyway that's uh, you don't have to implement the did end selector for this and the next part of course is context info where we don't care about because we're not passing anything in all right, so the last part here is IB action, and uh, oops, I kind of shouldn't have done this way, but anyway, IB action. There we go, and uh, the last thing we're trying to do is close sheet. All right, so the close sheet here, uh, what it's going to be doing, of course, is it's going to be closing our sheet. So this button has a few things to do. First is to tell our app that it's going to end the sheet. So to do this, we just say end sheet, and we pass in the sheet that we're going to end. So we just say self.sheet. All right, pretty simple. 
The next part is to actually close the sheet that we have. So we can say self.sheet and we can send the close message to that window. And that will actually close the sheet. And in doing so, since we have the release when closed option selected in Interface Builder, it will also release the sheet, which is important because otherwise it would stay around in memory and we don't want that. So make sure, uh, anyway, that's why we also close the sheet as an extra bonus. The last part is very important or else this whole thing will fail as soon as you try to do this again, is self.sheet gets nil. It might seem like, ooh, why do we do that? Well, the reason is, is if you just say, uh, for example, uh, running through this one more time, if we activate this sheet, you know, we load up the nib, we're now the owner, we made all the connections between the window and the button, etc. So, you know, that's cool, we, we loaded up the nib. The application begins the sheet, we tell it what window to run in, and that's all good there. Now we close the sheet, so we tell the application, hey, we're ending the sheet, passing the sheet that we're going to end. You close the sheet, this will tell our interface, well, not it doesn't tell Interface Builder anything because Interface Builder is just for us, but it tells the window uh, since it's uh, going to release when closed. So uh, it's going to actually send a release message to the window, basically. And that means that it's going to bring its retain count down to zero, basically getting rid of the window object. So it'll clean up your memory. And uh, so that's important. But the last step, you might be wondering, well, why do we do that if we're releasing the window right here? The reason for this is that the self the, the sheet will still have a reference to the window because even though you release an object, its memory address is still there even though uh, the object really isn't. So this is still pointing to the same still pointing to the same address even though the object isn't there. So we have to say point to something else, basically point to nil. And this will allow us to when we react it when we call activate sheet again, uh, it'll now not the sheet will be nil, so this will be uh, true and it'll reload the nib the next time around. If we don't have this call, our whole application is going to crash when it goes to activate the sheet again because it's still going to think that it's pointing to a window even though it's not, and then when it goes to load this up, it's not going to have any reference, so it's going to crash. You can try it by simply commenting that out, and I would suggest try doing that so you can understand this a little better. All right, so the whole thing's done now. We've fully implemented this. We can go ahead and run it. And but to do build run, activate sheet. Ooh, pretty. Get a nice little window. Move the window around. Close, activate, close, activate, close, activate. All right, there we go. And that is that. So those are your custom sheets, and you can fully do whatever the heck you want in this window here. But the important parts are that we have the app controller. Uh, our app controller instance becomes the files owner of, or the owner, if you want to just say, of the nib file. And then it can control this window by uh, setting up our nice little outlets in Interface Builder. And then, of course, when we go to load those in, everything loads properly. So anyway, that's all I really have to show you for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to leave your questions in the comments below. And I will see you next tutorial.